Now, Camilo Sullivan and the Hothouse Flowers are just two of the big acts taking part in this year's Eastside Arts Festival, which runs from the 2nd until the 12th of August. Rachel Kennedy is here to tell us more. Hi, Rachel. Hi. So tell us about this year's Eastside Arts Festival. Every year, it just seems to be getting bigger. You've been involved the past few years. You've obviously seen the festival grow. No, it's really exciting and as you said we've got a couple of really lovely headline acts this year with Camille and the Hot House Floors um, and that's because we're bringing back the big top to C.S. Lewis Square. So last year we put um, this incredible circus tent into C.S. Lewis Square for um, just three days and we had Tumble Circus doing the Eastside Family Circus and then in the evenings we had live music and it worked so well and was so popular that we thought well let's do it again and it's great this year because it's the 250th anniversary of circus so it means that we get to feature our own tumble circus again um, and then we've other, got other really great live acts happening in in the big top so as well as Camille and Hot House Flowers we've got um, Celtic Soul who are doing um, performing Astral Weeks the Van Morrison album that's having its 50th anniversary this year and is held in in um, very high esteem and much loved by by anybody really that's a band fan. And I'm standing in your doorway and mumbling and mumbling and mumbling. I can't remember the last thing that went through my head. Here comes. also got a wonderful show for children um, which is called uh, Big Fish Little Fish and it's a family rave so right. it's for people like me that would have you know enjoyed going out partying going down to raves dancing to really good music but it's now they get to experience this with their with their kids so for ages not to eight and their families. Now it seems every week in Belfast at the moment there's a different festival springing up all over the place. Number one, there must be a demand for great live entertainment out there and it must be something that Belfast does really well. I think you're right on both counts. There is most certainly a demand. Um, something we noticed last year was um, we started to programme more and more for a family audience um, and, and it was taken up beautifully. People came along, as I said, to the circus. We have a lot of free events. We run our um, the uh, East Side family fun day and it happens the first weekend of, of our festival in August and loads of people turn out, there's a real party atmosphere in C.S. Lewis Square, it's our celebration of everything to come in the festival, a lot of it is free um, and then we have other free events throughout the festival for families to come along and enjoy and to participate and to try something new, try something a little bit creative um, in the same way that the festivals across the city just I think represent the massive amount of creative energy that that is in Belfast at the minute and that that's kind of most celebrated and our stories are best told through our artists. So of course for people who haven't visited East Belfast, uh, C.S. Lewis Square is a great place to come and visit for your first time isn't it? It's a perfect place to come and visit, it's so easily accessible from town, you can cycle to it along the Conswater Community Greenway which will get you into C.S. Lewis Square and into the east from, from other parts of the city. Um, we're just across the bridge from the city centre and once you get to C.S. Lewis Square it's a really fantastic open inclusive public space, there are Narnian sculptures for you to find and enjoy and, um, 
and, and recognise there are Narnian trails to do, um, there are walks, there are cycles, and of course there's um, Jack Cafe, which is part of the Eastside Visitor Centre, so get a coffee and a really nice cake. And then of course there's Pot Kettle Black now, which is the pop-up restaurant in, in the square, in the container units. And they've already been getting really incredible reviews for their food and it is, it's really fantastic. So, so much to do if you come across into the square as well as just kind of hang out and enjoy the environment and, and relax. And every year during the festival as well, there's various tours, isn't there, that take you through different parts of East Belfast? Yeah, the Talks and the Tours um, programme has grown steadily. And again, part and parcel of um, kind of developing tourism within East Belfast and through the Eastside Visitor Centre. So there's a real interest in the, the industrial heritage as well as the cultural heritage of East Belfast. And throughout the festival, we try to provide as much of that as we can. So you can, you can discover... Um, uh, you know, uh, tours about Van Morrison and about the musical and cultural history of East Belfast and about um, C.S. Lewis, but you can also do the Yardmen walking tour. Um, and we have a cycle tour for seniors. So even if um, you want to go at a gentle pace and maybe start to become more confident on a bike, we have opportunities to, to get out and explore, explore East Belfast um, in ways that you're able to get out and get active. And if people want to find out more about the music of Belfast and stuff, I see Stuart Bailey's coming, dropping yeah. by to do his Trouble Songs, <laughs> isn't he? So Trouble Songs, um, Stuart's new book has had a brilliant reception so far. Um, and we're very fortunate that we've been able to support that. And also that Stuart then is going to do a lovely evening talking about the book and reading excerpts. And he'll be accompanied by three local musicians who will play some of the songs that, um, that would have featured throughout the book, which charts back through Belfast history to the time of the, the start of the Troubles um, and the role of music within, within our city's history. Tell us about some of the theatre events this year. I see there's a play reading about uh, one of East Belfast's most famous actors, the late great Jimmy Ellis. Yeah. No, we're very excited about this. So um, Jimmy Ellis's uh, widow, Robina, has very kindly um, provided some autobiographical material that he had written as well as some audio um, files. Um, to uh, Blunt Fringe Theatre Company. And Blunt Fringe have then um, in turn gone to uh, Glenn Patterson. So Glenn has edited the work and it's being presented um, as a partnership between Blunt Fringe and Eastside Arts um, for this year's festival. And it will be a rehearsed reading. And there, so there'll be poetry and song and it, it'll be lovely and I think very relevant to anybody that is interested in the history of, of East Belfast because Jimmy grew up in Park Avenue. And so the, this part of his, autobiogra uh, of his autobiography is about his childhood, his early childhood living in a house that was full of eccentric and interesting people, um, his family, friends of the family. And um, so it's kind of a story of, of one boy growing up in East Belfast. And of course, not too far away from Park Avenue, you've got the Strand Cinema, which also provides a venue every year as well, don't they? Yeah, so the Strand are wonderful and a great partner. Um, and they run their own series of events throughout the festival that support um, young emerging local arts. So they, they have their, their usual programme of screenings, but then they also have um, some comedy happening there. They have theatre happening there. Um, and they, they have a really lovely rounded programme of events um, there's also some uh, some readings and some uh, literary events happening in the Strand. So there's a lot going on within the Strand and they're also um, working in partnership with us to deliver the Rocky Horror Picture Show screening in the Big Top. Oh, brilliant. So it's a Strand on tour, yeah. And a chance for everybody yeah. to dress up as well. Exactly. <laughs> yes, we highly recommend it, yeah. <laughs> Uh, tell us about some of the other theatre highlights because there's a number of other local companies getting involved this year. Yeah, well, there? we're excited by um, a, a project that we're developing with a, um, a local author called Alice Malseed. And Alice is a member of the City of Belfast Boxing Academy, where she boxes herself. And over a number of years, she's got to know some of the young men that box in the club. And she's written a piece um, about their experiences, about the kind of the struggles within their life. Um, the choices they make, then the outcomes of those choices. And it's going to be staged in the Boxing Academy. Right. So we're excited yeah. by that. Um, that'll be an unusual um, aspect to the festival. So, you know, you can come and see a play in a boxing gym. You can spend a night sleeping over in an old church in East Belfast. There's lots of different things throughout the festival that are a little surprising. And we try to take advantage of the really interesting venues that are on offer in East Belfast. And 
put the right kind of events in there so that people can come and have a really unique experience. So there's so much happening this year. How long does it take to kind of get your program together? <laughs> Feels like it takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's, it's easily kind of six, nine months in the making. And whilst we're working on one festival, we're kind of thinking about the next one. Um, of course, it all comes about because the people that feature in the program are um, interesting and creative and have brilliant ideas. Um, and then they come and talk to me about them. And if I'm lucky, I just get to, to work with them and say, yes, let's do that. And you run kind of other spin-off events throughout the year as well, don't you? We do. Well, we also run another festival. So we run the C.S. Lewis Festival in November, um, which is a really important part of our programme. And it's very much focusing in on the legacy of Lewis and his kind of creative and imaginative influence. And it runs every November. So we're looking forward to that this year. And that's curated by Jan Carson, who also features heavily in this year's Eastside Arts Festival. Um, and then uh, we have community outreach that we run all throughout the year. So we do a lot of work um, working with seniors. Um, we're running an Artful Ageing programme, which is really all about ensuring that the more isolated members of our community have the opportunity to come out to join us. Um, we provide transport, we provide a lovely venue for them to come and participate in all sorts of different art forms. So they do everything from crochet to pottery to screen printing to poetry. Um, and this pursuit and creative um, engagement means a lot to them and we hope is creating a kind of a sustainable network of, um, of older people groups who then work with each other and talk to each other and hope hopefully combat the kind of the isolation that can set in an older age. Okay, so tickets are on sale now for this tickets year's are festival. On sale, How yeah. do people get their hands on those? You just take yourself to our website, which is eastsidearts.net, and they're also available at the, um, the Belfast Welcome Centre in town. And if people haven't seen Camille O'Sullivan before, they need to get along because it is such a great show. A stunning show, stunning performer. You, you won't understand how good she is until you experience it. So get your tickets. Rachel, thank you for joining us and the very best of luck with the thank festival. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you.